hello, you are about to watch a video about the mass production of clothes. Look at your clothes you are wearing now. Do you remember where you got them from? Do you think they were mass produced? And anyway, what is mass production? Mass production is the production of large quantities of standardized products, often using assembly lines or automation technology. Mass production aims for efficient production of a large number of similar products. So, what is the case with cloud production? Mass production is fast, affordable, and getting to customers in record time. Fast fashion companies focus on speed and maximum output. The profit of cheap fabrics in textile mass production is high, and the customers are happy as they can pay a lot less money for fashion and buy more than ever before. It keeps the fashion factory owners and the consumers happy. But what about the garment workers? Who is thinking about whether they are happy? And what about the environment? What happens eventually to these huge amounts of clothes that are produced? What do you think could be done on a personal level to stop this kind of waste? Do you know any laws and regulations that tell factories how to treat employees and or environment? In this video, we will learn about some ways on how we can initiate changes in politics to help our environment and also the garment workers who make all these clothes daily. Although it was the opposite in the past, nowadays it's quite unusual to buy clothes that are handmade and not created by automated production. It would seem like a good thing that so many clothes can be created during such a short amount of time, but it's not as great as it seems. Mass production has a huge negative impact on our environment. The way factories dispose of waste damages nature, since a lot of materials are thrown away, simply don't decompose. People also tend to get rid of their clothes faster, as they can always buy new ones incredibly quickly. Before the Industrial Revolution, most of the clothes were handmade. The invention of the sewing machine started before the 19th century, but the first practical sewing machine was introduced to the world in 1830 by Barthélemy Timonier in France. He opened a factory and started making uniforms for the army. It was demolished by tailors, who feared their business. In England, Women and children worked up to 15 hours per day in textile factories. In the US, mass production of clothes started in the 19th century. Mostly undershirts and trousers were made first, then corsets for ladies. The first step was to transition from manual to machine labor. To promote this, there was an advertisement by singer saying, Sewing by machinery. The singer companies specialized first in making clothes for black slaves in the USA. After the Civil War, the clothing factories started to make men's suits and ladies' coats and jackets. The early days of mass production promised elite fashion available for those people who couldn't afford it. The number of ready-to-wear garments doubled between 1880 and 1889. The majority of this industry was based in New York. Soon, manufacturers realized that styles needing less fabric were cheaper to produce, thus making more profit for them. So, the clothes became lighter. Fast forward to the 1990s, most US clothing production moved overseas. Generally, around 100 billion items of clothing are produced each year. Basically, after the First and the Second World War, due to both the improvement of technology and the growth of the population, the size of mass production grew as well. Some further reasons for the development of mass production are cheaper inputs, resources, automation of production, free trade, higher incomes, increased buying power, transportation development, mass consumerism, advantages and disadvantages. Mass production has both advantages and disadvantages, we have to admit that. Let's look at some of these. Advantages Accessibility of the same goods worldwide Producing at a high level of precision Lower costs from automation and fewer workers 
Higher levels of efficiency Disadvantages Environmental harm Innovation associated job losses No need for creativity Exploitative labor practices Globalization Loss of cultural diversity When profit is in the foreground, people tend to only see the advantages and they often don't deal with the disadvantages, even though they are definitely visible by now. Facts about the environmental harm Generally, around 100 billion items of clothing are produced each year. Every year, the fashion industry produces an estimated 92 million tons of waste. The textile waste is estimated to increase by about 60% between 2015 and 2030, with an additional new 57 million tons of waste. It takes a lot of water to produce textile, plus land to grow cotton and other fibers. It is estimated that the global textile and clothing industry used 79 trillion liters of water in 2015 to make a single cotton t-shirt 2,700 liters of fresh water are required according to estimates. A United Nations report estimates that 7,500 liters of water are needed to make jeans. Washing Synthetics releases an estimated 0.5 million tons of microfibers into the ocean a year. Laundering synthetic loads accounts for 35% of primary microplastics released into the environment. If you would like to learn more, I suggest this documentary. Plus, this industry is responsible for one-tenth of all carbon emissions in the world. The fashion industry is key for economic development. It is valued at some 1.5 trillion US dollars globally and directly employs 75 million people throughout its value chain. It is the world's third largest manufacturing sector after the automobile and technology industries. Many people, primarily women and children, are exploited by fast fashion. Factories employ young workers for long shifts and they are not paid fairly. They work in an unhealthy environment. We have heard of disasters such as Rana Plaza in 2013, where more than 1000 people died. In some cases, garment workers are informally employed without contracts, earn low wages and suffer from poor working conditions like heat, dust, chemicals, no proper protection gear, no brakes, no labor unions, no legal support, and so on. So you see, the cheap price of fast fashion comes with a high cost for our planet and the lives of garment workers. Often money talks in politics too. So if the profit is big enough and the decision makers get a part of it, then they are not motivated to end the suffering of garment workers. There is an activist movement for ending the exploitation of humans and the environment in the fashion industry, for safe working conditions with living wages, transparency in the supply chain, ending the throwaway culture, and for the craftsmanship to be valued. Fashion Revolution a campaigning non-profit organization was born in 2013 after the Rana Plaza disaster recognizing a greater need for transparency in the industry. The organization's priorities are mobilizing citizens, brands and policymakers through research and education to put an end to exploitation and promote transparency in the fashion industry. Fashion Revolution would like to alter the policy around garment workers and in order to do that, they asked the people most impacted what they would change if they had the power to do so. Find out their answers by watching this video.
there is an index for fashion brands issued by Fashion Revolution to rank them for how much information they are showing about themselves. It is called the Fashion Transparency Index, a large document issued yearly since 2016. Brands are invited to disclose data about the company's environmental and social policies, practices, and impacts publicly in order to achieve transparency in the fashion industry. Going transparent means they let others look into them and hold them accountable for their claims. It is necessary for a sustainable and fair fashion industry. Make sure to check it out on the website. It can be used for policy making to shape the fashion industry. Those who are involved in making new laws can benefit from such deep studies and analysis, using the information to write bills and make it obligatory for brands and factory owners to respect certain rules and this way make them responsible for their practices. California has importantly adopted a Garment Workers Law in 2022, Garment Worker Protection Act, which enforces that workers get paid by the hour and not by the piece and holds fashion brands accountable for unpaid wages. And what about other countries in the world, especially developing countries like India, where over 1200 factories can be found with 500,000 workers, they earn around 60 US dollars per month. Local labor unions have filed legal complaints against fast fashion brands across Asia. In the EU, there are also a set of policies to make the garment sector safer and more reliable with wages. Organizations like the Clean Clothes Campaign and projects like Ethical Fashion Initiative help to reach these goals. Changes are actually possible by signing petitions. This can be confirmed by several positive examples from the past. The next success story might be Good Clothes, Fair Pay, the campaign by Fashion Revolution. You can also be a part of it. The simple act of changing the way you shop and use your clouds counts a lot. So imagine how long it can take us if you get involved in one of our campaigns of these movements. We may not directly be able to write new policy, but activists can let the voice of the voiceless be heard and help it get to the lawmakers. Task. Let's do an experiment. Can you sew on a button? You will need these tools and materials. One piece of fabric. Two buttons with two holes. Scissors. Needle. Thread. Any color. Timer or your mobile phone. If you need it, watch this video on how to sew on a button. Take the fabric and cut it into two pieces. Get your two buttons out, thread your needle and set your timer. First, you have 30 seconds for the button to be sewn onto the fabric. Then, for the second piece of textile, you set the timer for 2 minutes and get the button down. Now, compare the two buttons and study their differences, and also how it was for you. What do you think happens more often in mass production? Stop the video and do the experiment. How did it go? How did you feel when you had to do it really fast, and how was it? then you had plenty of time. With this experiment you could try out what it's like to do a task when you are not in a hurry and when you must perform something in a shorter time than possible or than we are capable of. We are all different with differing capabilities. But when we are expected to do something almost impossible it induces stress and it doesn't do you any good in the long run even if you get better at it and get used to it, it is simply not healthy and it affects the quality of the work too. Do you think garment workers get asked if they feel stressed? Also, if we had to do such a work all day, we would expect a good salary, but in many factories, people are heavily underpaid. In the lesson, we have learned about mass production and how it affects the apparel industry. We have seen advantages and disadvantages of mass production, and now we understand the background of it. Based on the information gathered from this lesson, how do we view it? What this lesson aims at is that you see what is behind the face value of things, so that we all may start questioning what businesses are offering to us, 
through marketing and good-looking fashion models and begin to look for better solutions. Of course, complex problems need solutions on more levels and they also need actors in different sectors. We also need to know what we can do to support garment workers. You can research your favorite brand and see if they support garment workers. If not, an alternative for consumers may be searching for a tailor or small sustainable fashion business in one's own area. Is there one in yours? How popular is it and how high are the prices? Will you really consider buying clothes there in the future? But it's not only this. Let me summarize the options for you. What we can do? Raise public awareness because everyone counts. Read books and articles about the topic. Follow authors, influencers and organizations. Like and share. Take part in online and offline events. Educate people about the fashion industry. At school, thematic days, study groups. Outside school, summer camps, experts. Mobilize communities, organizations, clean clothes, fashion revolution. They have different campaigns, like asking who made my clothes or what's in my clothes. Groups for swapping or selling and buying on social media and apps. Try swapping clothes with your classmates, friends, instead of buying new ones. Collaborate with activists, doing voluntary work, social media following, article sharing, liking. Post about events with a hashtag. Buy less. Value quality over quantity. And take care of clothes. Do your research before buying new garments. Wear, repurpose and upcycle. Take care of your garments. Repair your clothes. Inspire people. Buy or create handmade clothes for yourself or as gifts. Advocate for policy changes. Brands can change their policies and governments can too. Follow the platforms where they can announce changes. Influence governments to play an active role in making laws and regulations in the textile industry. Sign the petitions. Now it's your turn. Pick a petal or two that you like.